as we're getting ready to start talking about use case prioritization and other detailed rules about use case documentation, I'd like to use our first homework assignment as an example. So I recommend that you open the elevator project business requirements description and read it. And as you go through the description, you should start identifying possible use cases, actors and objects and uh, take notes of any other important information that you begin to notice in this description. And your assignment is actually to document a use cases that you would consider to be important uh, for this application. So this is our form. I'm going to open the form. And this web form generally follows a traditional functional specification format. So you specify who is the author of this documentation. Um, you can, if you're working with a team, you can even use a nickname of your team and also nickname of your project. So there's some kind of header information about this. Um, and then you'd normally provide provide a system overview, your very brief uh, description of the system that you're trying to build so that it could be used in broader uh, sense of the audiences who could be reading this do document. Uh, what are your business goals? So this is, this is something that may be important for the investors. And uh, what type of users are going to use the system? Uh, typically, you describe who, who is going to use the system. Non-functional requirements. Remember, uh, we could include operating system environment information, programming languages, or databases that we're going to use, network requirements, and um, other, um, other um, environmental information outside of the system, but uh, otherwise important uh, to build the system. Uh, it's a great idea to provide glossary of terms. Sometimes, if it, this is an extensive uh, document, uh, you would want to use um, uh, a separate document uh, to provide this. And uh, this can be very beneficial to new people joining the team so that they don't have to run around to ask questions about simple acronyms, abbreviations, other technical terms used in the vocabulary. Uh, and uh, they can just simply find uh, in alphabetical order these terms and in case if they don't find this information that they can start you know, uh, asking other team members about specific terms. So this is important uh, and it kind of puts everyone on the same page in terms of the vocabulary that we're going to use. And now comes the use case documentation. It's pretty uniform. Um, so you may be finding uh, a lot of use cases in the system or not so many use cases in the system. So choose how many you want. Um, you can start with 5, 10, and if you run into the situation that, that you need more, you can switch to more than, more than 10. Now, this uh, next section, pretty much this, this entire part here, uh, describes this uh, complete use case format or we also call it a fully dressed use case format. Full dress means that we provide a brief dis description. So these are essentially names of our, uh, <clears throat> of our use cases. For instance, again, we can use this cancel flight example in our airline uh, uh, documentation. Who are the actors? Remember, we have airline staff, so we'll just use airline staff here as an example. Uh, preconditions. Uh, normally, you would like to specify the preconditions. Mm, for example, um, uh, flight has to be scheduled and active uh, prior to this use case. Okay, so something like this. Um, any information you know has to be in place already before uh, this current use case has to take place. Uh, you would like to, to display it. So main case scenario, ideally I would number steps, just use like one, two, three, four, five uh, steps. 
and for example number one select this is just arbitrarily I'm, I'm inventing it as I'm typing it right uh, select flight um, in flight uh, from the schedule and by the way just to make it a little bit more more realistic number one we can say select airline airline code right select flight number from the schedule that would be number two number three number three click cancel uh, and uh, by the way uh, we can also use this type of uh, wording in the steps that the user right the user the user selects airline code the user uh, selects flight uh, the user clicks clicks cancel N number four uh, the system displays confirmation dialog box with um, flight information and list of passengers again I, I'm just uh, a list of confirmed confirmed uh, reservations uh, just just an example just to just to be a little bit more specific rather than just click cancel number five <clears throat> user the user confirms by clicking OK and uh, selects uh, uh, customer notification form to notify customers okay so there could be some options uh, after the confirmation and number six again it depends if this is an extension or this is an include uh, we can say that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, if uh, there are confirmed uh, reservations, the notify customer use case is invoked right so we can we can use this type of language so look how i use it as an extension because i would like to make it look like conditional uh, conditional type of um, extension i prefer extensions to includes all the time i find that includes are very seldom occur to be so true that you know sometimes when there's an inc uh, when when would you use include uh, only in situation where these bubbles can be reused in some other use cases which is pretty much okay in in our diagram right here but i'm finding that there's always some kind of condition where some things could be cut short and not happen so if there's any kind of doubt that this could be optional you should not be using include because include is 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 so strong it's like one bubble okay cancel flight and notify customer is just one part of the same thing so we, which is sometimes you know if when functions exist or methods in java exist it's it's often the case that there's some kind of condition that is checked before they're called and other situation could be there could be called in a loop and uh, all of a sudden this loop uh, never executes any single iteration so some sort of loop condition prevents getting you to 
to that call to to make it happen so this is include is not my favorite option when i when i do my use case diagramming extend is much more streamlined and more you know more safe uh, type of design um, in general so i am documenting this more like an extension as as i tried in the first place uh, and then uh, so we can say the notify customer use case is invoked and again this is not precisely just use it for an example in the documentation uh, it may not exactly correspond to this uh, diagram but here i could use a post condition uh, specifying that uh, uh, all uh, all confirmed uh, reservations are placed on <clears throat> on the waiting list for a similar uh, flight destination okay so this uh, uh, this is uh, a great idea that part of this fully dressed or complete use case documentation you also use uh, both preconditions and post conditions to explain uh, what happens what, what is required to be in place before and what is going to be the outcome of this use case and there comes the priority so um, oftentimes it's just enough instead of some kind of cryptic numbering scheme like uh, one two three four five you can just use high medium and low which is quite readable and uh, quite substantial so something that high is high priority you true to uh, you you try to like do uh, as priority number one and medium is more like towards the end of your um, system uh, implementation and low could be even postponed something that could be even postponed till the next version of the system but could be included in this version use case id um, so use case id typically goes together with the brief summary description so you could just use something very simple such as some kind of numbering uh, idea here i don't know i have some prompts showing up in my web browser but um, typically you can say use case zero zero one okay and so you can uh, use categorize some of these numbering of your use case ids and please do not be confused by me filling it in with an example of an airline reservation uh, you have to you you don't you don't you're not going to be doing the airline reservation uh, case descriptions instead uh, you will be doing the uh, building elevator movement simulator uh, use cases so just 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 want to be pretty clear about this part that in my example i use this uh, uh, example we tried the, in in our prior presentation but this is uh, not about uh, the system it's just an example of the format and then the rest of this form is just simply using the same uh, section uh, for each use case that you would like to document i would expect you to document at least five or six or more use cases in the system and of course you need to read the description of the system in order to be able to uh, find uh, all of these uh, use cases that you want to document and of course identify who are the actors and what um, and i also recommend uh, to to put down the list of objects because you also have to submit the object diagram uh, together with um, the use case diagram for your documentation and as always as you move along you know working on this uh, uh, form or other form just remember to save your changes periodically it just saves everything and when you're ready to submit then submit it and uh, for your diagrams uh, use this link to upload your files and uh, ideally uh, i would expect that you submit uh, a pdf uh, or some image format 
that would be the easiest for me to open. All of the diagramming tools that uh, I put um, on our weekly uh, schedule uh, has uh, some form or some option on the menu to export the diagram in these formats. Any of these formats are fine. Um, any image format or PDF file are, are ideal for uh, your submission. Because if you use, um, for instance, um, Draw.io and submit some kind of uh, file saved by Draw.io uh, on your local uh, hard drive, I will not be able to open that file. So don't even try. I will just reply by saying that I cannot open that file. So just make sure that you submit something that's independent format, easy to open.